Good evening, Avondale College Church family, and all those who are joining us or who maybe happen to see this over the course of the coming days. Um, every night at seven, we have been reading through the book of Philippians and doing a short devotion on a number of um, verses in there. And the reason why we chose the book of Philippians is because Paul is writing to the church in Philippi from prison, from lockdown. Paul is in lockdown writing to the church and um, this letter is in that context and he's writing to them to give encouragement. And my pause there was because I'm not seeing anyone online. If you are there, if you are watching, give a wave, give a shout out, let me know you're here. Um, would love to chat to any of you and, and get some thoughts from any of you who are watching. So Paul's writing to the church in Philippi and he says to the church, he gives them a whole lot of encouragement um, and he's wanting to help them navigate through a difficult season. And we've been on this awesome journey together. So thank you for tuning in tonight. We're going to continue. We're in Philippians chapter 3 verse 15 to 21. And before we go any further, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you, open your word, um, listen and learn from what your apostle has shared many, many years ago. And may some of the thoughts and encouragement that he shared be soothing to us, but may it also remind us of what our purpose, our mission, our calling, and who you have called us to be in our world, in no matter what our circumstance, no matter what our situation so bless us as we journey together in Jesus name. Amen. So Michaela Hawks did last night and uh, those awesome verses in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 um, to 14. So here we are verse 15. Let's go. Here's what Paul says. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. I want to pause there. Spiritually mature. The first point that Paul brings out is that maturity is part of or growing growth is part of the Christian journey, is part of the journey of following Christ. That just like we in our physical bodies, we mature and we grow um, as we journey along. So too in our spiritual walk, there is a journey or a process of maturing. And here's the beautiful thing. Just like with our us as people, maturing isn't necessarily an age thing. Just because you've been in and around this journey of following Jesus longer than someone else doesn't mean you are more mature. Rather, maturity is an application, a discipline, a wisdom, and a spirit thing. Just like in life, <laughs> there are many people who are old but immature. And there are many people who are young but mature. And so let no one look down on you in your faith if you are a young person. Or let no one look up to you just because you are older. But rather, may like Paul has encouraged, may we continue to pursue the journey of growth in Christ so that we can all mature and grow in our journey with Christ. And so he says that all who are mature, agree on these things. If you disagree at some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. In other words, let's not bicker and argue with each other. At some point, if there's disagreement, let's lean into God and let him be the one to help navigate some of the, the difficult understandings or, or different nuances in our faith. God will make it plain to you, but we must hold on to the progress we have already made. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow my example. When I read this, I was like, man, I don't know. I don't know if I could like Paul say to people around me, hey, follow me, copy my life. If you want to know what discipleship or following Jesus looks like, look at me, follow me me. Whenever I talk to people, I'm like, hey, follow Jesus. He's the one. And it's true. He's the one we're all following. 
But the thing is, sometimes it's hard to actually grasp and make sense of what following Jesus is or looks like or what, how, to, how to apply that in our world, in our everyday lives. And so Paul here, he actually says, hey, for those who are new to faithful, for all those who don't know how to do this, look at me. Follow me. Look at my example as I follow Jesus. And it's a real humbling thought. What do others see when they look at me? Is my life, are my actions going to be leading people closer to, directing people towards that path of growth and maturity? Would I be bold enough to say, hey, in your journey of faith, just follow me? Verse 18, for I've told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are rarely enemies of the cross. And here Paul is referring to some who, who claim to be followers of Jesus, who claim to be followers of the way, who claim to be part of the kingdom of God. But there's a disconnect between what they say and what people see and what they do. Um, one of the bands I used to listen to when I was in high school, DC Talk, they had a song that started off and it said, the song was called, What If I Stumble? And um, it started off saying, the greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who profess one thing with their mouth and do something different with their lives. If people can't see the integrity, the harmony, and the consistency in who we are and what we do, why would they want to follow what we say? There's, a, there's another principle at play here, and, and this, um, there's a beautiful book about it by Andy Stanley called The Principle of the Path. And, and in it, he says, it is not your intentions, but your direction that determines destination. That is the principle of the path. And here, this is what Paul is talking to, talking about as well. If you want a journey on that path to maturity, if you want there to be congruence between what you say and what you do, if you want people to look and, and follow and see that, hey, I can look to this person because they're following Jesus and I can follow their example and be inspired and challenged and motivated by them, then you need to be moving in the direction of the destination where you want to be. It doesn't matter your intentions. If you're not moving in that direction, you're never going to arrive at that destination. It's like me getting here on the motorway at Morris said and, and turning right when I get to the highway and heading north and saying, you know what? I want to go to Sydney. No matter how hard or fast I drive or how determined I am to drive north, I'm never going to get to my destination because even though my intention is to go to Sydney, my direction is totally wrong. And so Paul says, may our intention and our direction match. May our words and our actions match because then we will arrive at our destination. This is the principle of the path. Verse 19. But those that live this integrous or disingenuous life, they're headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth. That's, that's a call to all of us who sometimes wrestle and struggle with the philosophies of our world. Hedonism, the pursuit of pleasure. You know, many think and believe that's all there is. And so let's, let's live for that. Or consumerism, materialism. This idea that when I get more, when I gain more, when I hoard more for myself, then I'm going to be happy. Then I'm going to be satisfied. Then I'm going to be fulfilled. Or, or just all these other isms that we as human beings naturally, that our appetites yearn for or lead us to, that often call us to. Here's the thing about appetites. Appetites never say wait. Appetites are always like, I want it now and give it to me, please. I want it now. Appetites 
always want more. They are never fully and finally satisfied. And so if your appetite is what it is you're following, if your appetite is your God, if you're just living according to your, your human desires and appetites, one, you're never going to be satisfied. Two, it never actually leads to a path of peace, to a path of harmony, to a path of fulfillment. And Paul says, if, if that is your God, the direction you're moving is, is one of destruction. And we see that with the destruction of, of lives and, and, and relationships and connection in our world around us. And so Paul encourages, he says, no, no, rather, we are citizens of heaven, verse 20, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And you know what? He's, he's, saying that and he's claiming that in the present he's like yes this is a future reality that we look forward to the full and final consummation of the kingdom of god but he says this is a present reality that we enter into and we live out in our lives each and every day we are citizens of heaven so let's while we live here on this earth and we are a part of this earth and we can be citizens of heaven on the earth we can bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven to the earth as we live and follow Jesus and his will and his way. He says, we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and is Lord of our lives. And we are eagerly waiting for his return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into his glorious body, just like his own, using, and I love this, the same power which he will bring everything under his control. That gives me encouragement. That gives me assurance. That gives me hope that, you know what? This path of growth and maturity, this path of living in the Lordship of Jesus Christ, saying, I don't want to be ruled by my desires and by my appetite, but rather I want to be ruled and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, the power that was given to Christ to bring everything under his control, the power through which he was raised to life, the power through which he will make all things new and has made you new, that same power is available and will be used to transform even our lives. And that gives me encouragement. That gives me hope. I don't need to do this out of my own will, out of my own power. But as I follow and journey with Jesus and by his spirit, that wisdom and maturity grows, that discipline and, and application of the way of Christ, the kingdom of God in my life, then... I grow and mature and the power of Christ lives and works in and through me to will and to do his good pleasure. And so I don't know about you, but I too would love to be at a place where like Paul, I'm confident in my pursuit of Jesus where I can say, you know what, guys, follow me as I follow Jesus. Not that I've already attained. I'm not there yet. Just like Paul said, we're nowhere near perfect. That's not what we're striving for. Rather, we're striving for committed, focused, and no matter what, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because as we do that, we grow and mature and bring about the citizenship of heaven into our lives and into our world and to the neighborhoods around us. So may we purpose to do this together. May we purpose that no matter what, we will live as citizens of heaven here on this earth. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power that is at work within us. But we thank you that it is your power, not ours. We thank you that even though our appetites are, are strong and drive us in many ways and in different directions, that we can lean into you to bring those under control, 
but also to direct and focus those according to your will. And may our intention and our direction come together in a beautiful way so that our destination is the path that we are journeying towards. And Lord, continue to grow in us and grow your life through us as we journey towards you and towards this thing called the kingdom of God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. So glad we could continue this reading through Philippians and we'll see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. God bless.